Okay, all in all, it was just another brick in the wall, and basically it's brick by brick that uh, awakened me to what Alex Jones really is. And another brick that I found today, uh, I'm going to tell you about right now. Um, I had stumbled upon an interview that Alex Jones had with a John DeCamp who wrote the uh, Franklin cover-up expose. And uh, being that we have a background of Jones purposely leaving out the Vatican um, in every different kind of conspiracy, in every, in every matter almost that he reports about, um, he could attach it every, every, on almost everything he reports, but he does it on purpose because he's a Vatican agent. Uh, this, is, this is exactly, he's the same exact entity um, that has infiltrated our school system, our media, and everything else. He's just a part of it. He's another one, another uh, shill. And so, I'm going to read to you what I have. Dear friends, this is an excerpt of an interview Alex Jones had with uh, John DeCamp, author of the Franklin cover-up about Boys Town. Now I saw that movie and they made it look like there's Republicans involved and some just government officials, something like that, and that's it. Um, that's what I remember. I haven't watched that movie in a long time. I saw that several, several years ago. I had purchased it, I think, in an eBay lot, uh, and I got it. I, on, I have it on VHS. So, just a little tell you about how long ago it was. Okay. So, I, I have the excerpt here of Alex Jones with this John D. Camp, author of the Franklin cover up about Boys Town. In this bit of the interview, you can see Alex Jones apparently whitewashing a Monsignor's involvement in the pedophilia conspiracy that was taking place there. The Monsignor was the overseer of Boys Town. He was the top guy in there. Yet he automatically is innocent, according to Jones. They don't even consider him a possible suspect especially with all the pedophilia in the Catholic Church, they even edited the Monsignor's name out of the interview. And here's the bit. And you can find the link on my site uh, in my Alex Jones information. Now listen, if anyone has any solid information that could debunk what I'm saying, not just by saying, oh, he's not, how could he be a... Uh, a CIA agent, how could he be a Vatican agent when he's done all this? Um, because in order to be a good misinformation agent, and Alex Jones is the best, uh, you have to have a lot of good information, a lot of truth. Now, he's not the only one that gets this information, but let me tell you a little something. A lot of people believe that Alex Jones is for real. So, what happens is people will contact him with news stories. They'll, they'll contact uh, Alex Jones' contacts. And so, of course, Alex Jones is going to be getting this information, a lot of it first, because everyone's flooding him. Oh, did you hear this? They're sending him emails, contact him every which way, saying, do you know about this? Do you know about that? So then Alex Jones just takes it has uh, one of his guys do do a story on it, do a, you know whatever look at, look into it, get the story, and uh, and put it on their site, and they get it out, and they spread it all around. So that's how Alex Jones gets his information. It's really no big deal, okay? Um, so. So anyway, as I was saying, uh, if you have any solid information that can debunk me, please send it my way and I'll take down my information, whatever's wrong. Debunk it with proof. 
I, I don't know how you could go, you could prove it anymore. I mean, if you've seen any of my other videos, I, I raised some serious questions about Alex Jones. Very serious. Okay. So this is a bit of this interview with John DeCamp. And I don't know if this is a typo, this part. This is off Alex Jones' own site, so don't think that, you know, I'm getting it from other, some other source that's against Alex Jones or something. This is on uh, John DeCamp interview with Alex Jones. Okay, so it says, I'll say JD for John DeCamp and AJ for AJ. JD. Anyway, they pretty well... Dot, dot, dot. But anyway, the head of Boys Town, the head of Boys Town now is an 87-year-old man, a Monsignor. Guess who his nervous attorney is? He's hired because he's getting old and is worried about wanting to get some things told and get some truth out, which might happen about the next week. His nervous attorney is a young man. Well, he's not a young man anymore, is he? A man named John DeCamp wrote a book called The Franklin Cover-Up. If anybody would have reason to want to attack me, it was him. Instead, he's doing the opposite. AJ. Now repeat that again. JD. He hired me within the last week or ten days as his private attorney because of some things you've been reading about in the national press. Pedophilia of the priest and so on. He's an old man now and he's 87 or 88. And who is he again? He was the head of Boys Town. Oh, okay. Sorry. AJ. Oh, okay. JD. Monsignor. Dot, 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 dot. They edited his name out. He also was the only Catholic priest ever appointed as a delegate to the United Nations. He was a very special delegate appointed by, I think, two different presidents as a representative to the United Nations on behalf of children. Isn't that interesting? Monsignor, head of Boys Town, uh, was a special delegate appointed by two presidents to be a, pr a representative to the United Nations on behalf of children. Now do you think that instead of this expose that it might be really a cover-up, that the, the expose of the Franklin cover-up is a cover-up? I think they inadvertently got to the bottom of it right here. Now listen, listen to the rest of the interview. AJ, and he's going to blow the whistle? JD, he's going to provide some information that I think will rock some people, and of course, they will immediately denounce him and shut him up, I suspect. But I just, just to alert you, AJ, I hope he's got bodyguards around him right now. JD, no, he's an old man. That will, po that will probably be an outcast once he does this. So I've said too much on that already, probably. That's the end of the excerpt. If you want to find the whole thing, go to my site. Okay. Notice the bottom. He says, I've said too much on that already, probably. Okay. Then, a little bit more on... Martin, uh, Martin Sheen, who Alex Jones publicly praised on his short CNN appearance. And he, they praise him on uh, PrisonPlanet.com. I have a link to that on my Alex Jones information also. Okay, so Martin Sheen speaks at big event at Catholic San Diego University. Here's a brief part of the article. San Diego. Actor Martin Sheen was on hand Wednesday to deliver a poem to commemorate the opening of the Uni University of San Diego's Joan B. Croc School of Peace Studies. Sheen discussed the importance of promoting peace. The venerable actor said, It's very contagious, and once you become comfortable as a peacemaker, it becomes something automatic, instinctual. The school was funded by a $50 million endowment from Croc. Its mission statement is to advance peace and justice by attracting the finest international scholars, practitioners, and students dedicated to the work of peacemaking. 
Now, the Croc, this Croc, uh, this Joan B. Croc is the third wife of McDonald's CEO, Ray Croc. So the wife of Ray Croc, CEO of McDonald's, gave this Catholic church, uh, university, $15 million. Okay. The University of San Diego is a Roman Catholic institution founded by the Most Reverend Charles F. Buddy, First Bishop of the Diocese of San Diego, and Mother Rosalie Hill, Superior Vicar of the Society of the Sacred Heart. Okay, that's it. Just two more bricks in the wall. Okay, so this uh, I'm looking into this whole conspiracy of violence thing, and this is getting interesting because... Uh, someone connected with this really big ministry uh, who are uh, exposing the Vatican and the Jesuits are really good and really well known contact me about how they stumbled upon this ex-FBI Gunderson who does all this uh, supposed um, exposés on Satanism and the government and just Satanism as a whole he's like this uh, big expert on Satanism. I'm starting to see something here. I'm starting to see a real huge cover up. And I'm starting to see misinformation and disinformation clearly being fed to us in, in many different ways by many different people. Now, this Gunderson on his website, not only does he promote Alex Jones, but he also promotes this uh, really demonic. Uh, false vision, false miracle, this Fatima uh, thing with, with the Catholic Church. So Gunderson promotes this big Catholic fake uh, fake sign uh, which the Bible speaks about what will be happening in the last day. There'll be these, like, these fake signs and things like that and false prophets and stuff. But that's what the Catholic Church claimed. They claimed that this was a big sign from God, this Fatima Thing. And this Fatima thing really ties uh, into Islam real strong. And I think that's a strong link right there. Uh, because this Fatima was, I think, the daughter of Muhammad or something like that. I'll, I'm going to get this straight. Let me get to the, the point I want to make. Okay, here's a, a connection between Fatima and Islam. And this is from a big-time Catholic writer. His name is Matt C. Abbott. And he writes for Catholic uh, periodicals and stuff like that. Um, this is the quote from his article. It says, Is there a connection between Our Lady of Fatima and Islam? In short, yes. The Muslims who have a certain devotion to Our Lady and recognize her virgin birth and immaculate conception, were intrigued by the fact that Mary had appeared at Fatima, which is the name of Muhammad's favorite daughter, and regarded by the Prophet as the highest woman in heaven after Our Lady. In Zanzibar, the Muslim Sultan placed a wreath of flowers at the Fatima statue's feet, while the Muslim chief and the Is Mali tribe, the Muslim beak, placed a golden necklace about the statue's neck, saying, Thank you, Our Lady of Fatima, for the work of love you are accomplishing in Africa. Could Our Lady of Fatima play a role in eventual elimination of militant Islam? I wouldn't be surprised. And she he goes on to say some more propaganda and then she wrote, Okay, so this conspiracy of silence and Gunderson. That's what I want to stay focused on. His name is Ted L. Gunderson. And the person who gave him the copy of Conspiracy of Silence, this is what happened. Supposedly, someone anonymously gave Senator and Attorney, okay, Nebraska State Senator and Attorney, John DeCamp, a copy of this video and he made it available to retired FBI agent Ted L. Gunderson. 
So, like I said, Gunderson is tied to the Catholic Church. I wrote uh, Eric Phelps about it. He said that he is a town, he's a Jesuit coadjutor for sure, for promoting the miracle and for promoting uh, Alex Jones. And Gunderson talks about all these different types of Satanism, but Satanism, the biggest Satanism going on in this world is through this Catholic Church. Very satanic. I mean, it's the beast in, you know, in Revelation. I mean, it's powered by Satan himself. That's, how, that's what the Bible says in the book of Revelation. Now you know why the Catholic Church w would have public burnings of the Bible. And the Catholic Church uh, uh, suppressed the Bible, murdered translators, and burned them at the stake. Because the book of Revelation is the strongest, most powerful witness against the Catholic Church on the face of the earth. It says it's the city on seven hills, which is Rome. Talk about this Gunderson, his connection to the Catholic Church, uh, his connection to this conspiracy of silence, and this whole connection of whitewashing the Catholic Church out of this whole thing. This conspiracy of silence, it says that these underage kids were flew into Washington, D.C. for sex orgies. Washington, D.C. used to be called Rome, Maryland. It was a part of Maryland called Rome. I kid you not. Okay, so this is John DeCamp, who was anonymously given this video, uh, which made it the, the great, well, the whole uh, Franklin conspiracy cover-up, the video. Uh, he is a very interesting person, to say the least. Okay, first of all, he worked with the uh, the director of the CIA, William Colby. Uh, and him and Colby remained close and lifelong friends, DeCamp and Colby. Um, Colby was replaced by... George H.W. Bush as the director of the CIA. And John DeCamp was an aide of William Colby's before William Colby was made director. So that's a little bit of this man's history, John DeCamp. So then he hooked up with, uh, with Gunderson, who promotes this fake Fatima vision miracle, this hoax. And they leave out, um, I, think, I don't know who, I think only one person got in trouble. What's his name? Larry King. I think that's his name. Okay, so to me, all these big exposés of conspiracies, they all seem like it's a big uh, psyop, psychological operation on us. I mean, everyone's connected to the CIA. you got CIA all over the place, all over this 9-11 movement. You got an archbishop of the Catholic Church in the 9-11 movement. You got Jones. You got him friends with Pat Buchanan, who worked with Mockingbird's uh, Thomas Braden for nine years. Then you got Gunderson. He's ex-FBI. He, he does this whole fake sa Satanism in America. This whole fake Satanism in America. You got DeCamp, who came up with this video, who was uh, an ex-CIA Aid and stayed lifelong friends with the director of the CIA. And you got Alex Jones interviewing DeCamp. You got Alex Jones interviewing Buchanan. You have Alex Jones interviewing Hutton Gibson. You have him praising Martin Sheen. You have him uh, promoting Mel Gibson's movie, saying they're the most powerful films he ever saw. You have him promoting Pat Buchanan's book. And all this, the CIA all over the place. All over. Something's going on. Something bad is happening, okay? All this is whitewash. All this is cover up, I'm telling you. Something that's way worse. Much worse. This Monsignor, that was the head of Boys Town, was named, appointed as delegate to United Nations to represent children. And look what happened under him at Boys Town. And he's just left out of it, and Alex Jones leaves him out, and he's whitewashing the whole thing. And then, and then they even omit the Monsignor's name out of the interview, it's John DeCamp. Bad news, guys.
right, now you know why Alex Jones is is uh, really trying to say that uh, we're mental cases, people who are investigating the Vatican. Because people who are investigating the Vatican can, can shine a spotlight on all these different things that are happening. I mean, the Catholic Church created the CIA. Did you ever hear John say that? Did you ever hear him say that the Jesuits and the Catholic Church were behind the Holocaust and genocides? He, I, you never hear him say any of this. You never see him connecting the dots with the Vatican and the Knights of Malta, the Vatican, the Jesuit Order, the Knights of Columbus. Never. The man, he's a shill. He's an agent. And he's a really good agent, a deep undercover agent. Because I know most of the government officials probably don't even know what he is. They might suspect it, but they don't. I don't think they know. I saw Alex Jones uh, chasing after these FEMA guys, and come on, there was something very strange going on. Very, very strange. And I know uh, who's behind it all. I know who's behind it all. It's the Catholic Church, the Vatican, and all their agents, the Jesuits. The black pope speaks eight, speaks eight languages. He's over 28, there's 28 Jesuit universities in America. That's not including all the ca other Catholic universities. He's over them all. He's a top Jesuit. He's all over the world. This is the, the most learned, the, the smartest individuals on the face of the earth. But thank God they've been exposed. I mean, read the, the Jesuit oath. But they vow to kill the baby and, and dash him against the, the walls. And how they, they, they say it'll be all things to all people. If you're a Protestant, they'll act like a Protestant. And it doesn't even matter if you're a king or the lowest man on the face of the earth, they'll kill you. If you're at all a heretic, if they deem you a heretic, if you don't accept the, um, the Pope as your God, I'm not kidding. They call him the Holy Father with caps. Capital H in Holy and capital F in Father. The Bible says, call no man Father on earth. They say he's the vicar of Christ, the representative of God on earth. It's crazy. And they're trying to bring in a one world government and church. And it's Satanism. It's the root. It all comes from satanic worshipings and the pagans it all goes back to Satan worship. Every, all these different things that the Catholic Church does. They mingled it in with all these uh, ancient satanic practices. Okay, well now I found more in this whole situation. You know, sometimes you think you are you're onto something and you're first putting something together and then all of a sudden you stumble upon someone who has a lot more information. So I stumbled upon this uh, JesusIsSavior.com. I'm sure a lot of you know of it. It has a lot of good information on it. And uh, on this piece that he did on his website, it says Peculiar Ties Connect Boys Town to CIA. Okay. Although the national media focused on pedophilia and abuse committed by Catholic priests in the Boston area and elsewhere, the media have consistently suppressed an even more explosive and related story. For years, former Nebraska State Senator John DeCamp has spearheaded an inquiry into a massive pedophile ring with a base of operations in Omaha, Nebraska, and has been linked to high-ranking political figures in Washington. Recently, DeCamp won a one million civil judgment against former big-name Republican Party figure Larry King on behalf of a young man, Paul Bonacci, who charged that King had molested him and brought him into the pedophile ring. DeCamp was the guest on the February 24th broadcast of Radio Free America, the weekly talk forum sponsored by AFP. American Free Press with host Tom Valentine. Valentine's questions are in boldface. The cancer responses are in regular text. Paula's comments are in italics. When your client, Paul Bonacci, filed a lawsuit against Larry King of the Franklin 
Credit Union in Omaha, you also named the Catholic Archdiocese of Omaha as a co-defendant. Why? The reason was that my client said that it was because of a couple of Catholic priests there started doing improper things to him at a very young age and started him into the tra tragic life that he led and started him into the tragic life that he led. The federal judge ruled that it was not possible to name the archdiocese, that it couldn't possibly be guilty of anything, because how would they know what individual priests had been doing? In other words, how could the bishop have known anything to stop it? Question mark. This sounds just like the current controversy in Boston, except this happened long before the Boston scandal. That's right. It was exactly like Boston. I took it so seriously at the time that I went to Rome and met with Cardinal Ratzinger. He's the one who has been in charge of the systematic problem in the Church of Priests involved in pedophilia. Ratzinger is now in the limelight over this issue but he couldn't get anyone to do anything for 12 or 13 years ago when I was writing about this and filing my lawsuit. I appealed the decision removing the diocese from my lawsuit. I went before the Eighth Circuit Court of Appeals and they upheld the judge's decision in favor of removal of the diocese. I went on to win the rest of the lawsuit against Larry King, but I was always bitter because I knew that I was right. This problem of priests abusing their position and abusing young children was a serious problem and not being properly dealt with by the church. Of course, there have been major cases in recent years, but these cases trace back to events many years ago. So now we have the Catholic Archdiocese in Boston paying out millions to settle claims, but my case in Omaha was thrown out. So when I'm reading this, it makes me think that even though John DeCamp was an aide of the CIA agent, it makes me it makes me think that he's legitimately trying to do what's right. Because of what he's saying here. But this is this is deep. Okay? So they have I mean they're they're showing this uh, conspiracy of silence all over the place. But, but uh, the Catholic Archdiocese, the priests, were the ones that started him off into the life, into the pedophilia. And they get away. They threw, they threw it out. Unbelievable. When in the course of your investigations did you begin to realize that Boys Town in Omaha was essentially a farm for what you determined to be a national network of pedophiles that extended well beyond pedophilic priests? When the children I was representing, and in the course of interviewing others, brought the role of Boys Town up as a central point, at least certain elements of Boys Town were being improperly used. Now you have picked up a new client, and it ties directly into Boys Town. My client is the former head of Boys Town. He was the head longer than anyone in the history of Boys Town. His name is Monsignor Robert Huff. In 1976, he was appointed as a U.S. delegate to the United Nations, the only clergyman ever appointed to that position. So this is very similar to Alex Jones' interview, only they didn't edit out the Monsignor's name. He contacted me. He's 87 years old. I met with him, and he needed some help. He felt, I guess, at his advanced age that he wanted to correct some problems and abuses that he had tried to years ago. Just after I was asked to represent him, he completed a major record, recorded deposition in the presence of many church lawyers and also attorneys for a number of altar boys who had been abused by priests. Did he come to you because they were 
there were suits against Boy's Town. There were lawsuits against the Catholic Archdiocese of Omaha and Boy's Town as a part of the Archdiocese. There were, there were lawsuits against the Catholic Archdiocese of Omaha, and Boy's Town was a part of the Archdiocese. The position of the church, which is very public, was that they knew nothing about the abuse, and if they had known, they would have done something about it. However, the essence of what Monsignor Huff asked me to do was help get the true story out, because what he had to say was rather shocking, and would totally disprove the claim here in Omaha, and probably in a lot of other places. I made the arrangements so that he could get the story out under oath. The deposition that he gave in his case may be sealed. But one way or another, the story I had to tell will come out. Let me give you some background on one scene to help, so that will probably make sense. In 1969, Hupp became what is called the Vicar General of the Catholic Archdiocese of Omaha. The Vicar General is the second in command, just below the bishop. When the bishop was gone, the Vicar General acts in his place. He held this post until 1973. During that time, he became aware of the problem of sexual abuse. He officially notified the bishop at the time, Bishop Sheen, and said, this is terrible, you have to do something. From 1969 to 1973, Hupp was making an issue of this, but the bishop did nothing to move the priest to another parish. So we overcame the first offense that we didn't know, and if we did know, we would have done something. Then Hump gave the ultimate ultimatum to the bishop, saying, I'm resigning as vicar general, and the bishop tells him that he can't do it. Hump said, I will either resign, or you will accept my resignation, or I will go to the Omaha World Herald newspaper, and we'll see what happens then. So the bishop let him resign. Shortly thereafter, Hump was appointed to be the head of Boys Town. Today, Hupp believes this was sort of a reward for keeping quiet. He served as head of Boys Town until 1985, and of course went on film with the BBC acknowledging that he was, was like the wife who was the last to know. This is what is all belonging. This is all belonging. Okay. He is now determined to do what he can to correct the problem. He sees this as a failure to address the issue which caused it to get worse. Okay, so who knows at this point? All I know is that uh, they're saying that there was priests involved. They got away. This is a long, long interview. I can't even begin to read all of this. Um, put the link on my page, spiritualsmart.com. I'll put it at the top someplace in bold letters so that you can click on it and read it if you want. But the whole thing is fishy. You can't, even though he said he tried to do it, he knows if it's true. I mean, it could just be a, a good story to try to get away with as much as possible. But all I know is they, dropped, they did drop the case, and there's a lot more here talking about Georgetown and talking about um, the FBI, talking about the CIA, and more in the Catholic Church. So, my suspicions were right, and it's amazing how this whole Boys Town thing is going around, and, and they don't even talk about the Catholic Church, even though they were named in the lawsuit but they made them throw that part out, drop that part of the lawsuit against the Archdiocese. They couldn't see the Archdiocese. And he met the Cardinal Ratzing. And Cardinal Ratzing, it's well known that he covered up pedophilia in the church. And then they made him Pope. He's an ex hitler youth. I'm not kidding. You don't think that this whole thing is a, a whole huge conspiracy? with all the leaders of all these countries involved in child pornography and pedophilia and stuff, I think that's part of, like, becoming a, a leader. They have to do that. That's where they have it against them. And no one could, like, they have to be their puppets after that. 
Or else they'll spill the beans, they'll have someone spill the beans on that during the child porn or something. Sick. I'm just saying, I mean, because, because Ratzinger was the biggest uh, pedophile cover-upper in the world. And he got all these leaders meeting with him. They're all meeting with him. They're not, not everyone's, you know, meeting with any, there is no one else on earth that more people meet with than the Pope. He's a leader of the earth. And the black Pope is behind him, tells him everything he has to do for the good of the church, because the black Pope is a small one. And there is all this uh, Luciferian, satanic, uh, hidden arts that no one else knows about. And so he's in contact with the devil. This is what Alberto Rivera said and other people have said. And I have other books from the late 1800s, early 1900s that says that um, it's well known for a long time that the black Pope tells the Pope what to do. And if the, the Pope has to stay in a circle, and if he steps out of that circle, he's a dead man. And many of Popes have been uh, killed. They say that this now is coming out that this John Paul II was euthanized. And then John Paul I, before him, died after 33 days of being dead. He was in like perfect health. All of a sudden he's dead. That's called the uh, cup of uh, Borgia. It's a poison, poison cup, poisoned again. That's what the book says. So this black pope is behind uh, the pope for the good of the church. And uh, the, the, so he's like, a, he's the figurehead, this, this white pope. And, but they all meet with him to show his show. Because that's who they give the power to. They put him, the pope, there. They allow him to be who he is, the top in the eye of the world, the top man. They want, they, everyone will be under him. And they are. Everyone that goes in and is subservient and they go, they bow to him, they kiss his hand, they kiss the, the, the ring on his finger. That's 100, that's show, that's an outward show of 100% submission. I have a picture of the, uh, Bush down to him, George Bush. So this is, I mean, Okay, so Ratzinger is the biggest cover of pedophile cover up in the world. You don't think these people don't know? All these leaders that go and meet with them, they go in there. I'm not talking about the leaders of Israel too. He's an ex not he's an ex heavy youth. You think that these people just these if they were real Jews that they would just meet with them and not care about that? whole thing is fraud. Everything we see is just fake. It's all fake. And all these people are in on it. All these people that are supposedly bringing us the truth through these exposés and stuff, they're all in on it. 